Hello, my name is Maria and I'm the developer advocate at BotCube. Welcome to our CNCF webinar about unlocking the power of collaborative troubleshooting in Kubernetes with BotCube. Just a little bit about BotCube. BotCube is a open core, open source forward, collaborative troubleshooting platform for Kubernetes. With BotCube, you're able to monitor and act on your Kubernetes events within any of your messaging platforms. And collaborative troubleshooting at its core is being able to work with your team remotely and troubleshoot and debug Kubernetes all within your messaging platform. The Kubernetes space is complex. So Kubernetes, there's a very steep learning curve. It requires you to understand or container orchestration and managing deployments all at once and cloud infrastructure all at the same time. And when you add the CNCF landscape on top of that, it can be very difficult for development teams and platform teams to get everybody on the same page and build an efficient workflow for everybody to get all of their code deployed safely and on time. In addition, remote troubleshooting is very challenging. So troubleshooting at its core is basically being able to solve problems as a team efficiently, effectively, um, and in a timely manner. The thing that makes it very difficult is that there are different teams trying to solve the same problem, but they might not all have the same context, might not all have the same resources, and may not all have the same level of expertise. So for example, a development team might not have the same understanding of Kubernetes as a platform team. However, when an app goes down, they, everybody on both teams wants to know how to get the problem solved. But it requires you to send screenshots or hop on a live chat or even schedule meetings um, during the work hours to get everything done. And BotCube is here to solve that problem, especially in the era of remote first work. It can be very difficult to debug and troubleshoot on time when you're dealing with multiple time zones and trying to get people all um, on the same page. So an unorganized troubleshooting process can lead, lead to many problems. One of those is reduced productivity. So if you're spending a lot of time figuring out who I need to go to, um, who has the right context, who understands what error is going on, it could lead to a lot of wasted time trying to figure out how to solve the problem instead of actually solving the problem. And this can also lead to increased uh, downtime. So a lot of the time that's wasted trying to figure out who to go to, who has the right information, could be spent getting the errors solved in a timely manner. And then because of communication issues, this could lead to team morale. So cross-functionally, it can lead to low morale. So if your platform team is not aligned with your development team, it could lead to a lot of conflict. But even within um, teams themselves, if, not, if everybody's not getting the resources that they need, it can be very difficult and cause a lot of internal conflict. So what is collaborative troubleshooting? So at its core, it's the ability to monitor and troubleshoot events all in the same platform. So this means using the communication tools that you're already using, like Slack, Discord, Mattermost, and Teams, and the many others that are out there, and being able to receive alerts and also be able to act on them all in one place. So you can improve your developer experience and give them self-service access without giving, requiring them to understand Kubernetes. Um, so for example, um, if your app goes down, your developer may not understand how to navigate Kubernetes in the terminal. But if you're able to give them access in a Slack channel per se, you can get the problem solved fairly easily without requiring them to learn the intricacies of Kubernetes. And lastly, because they're um, synced into communication platforms like Slack, Discord, Mattermost, and Teams, you're able to have access to your alerts from any platform anywhere you go. So you're able to have access 
um, to Kubernetes from your phone, which I think is a great tool, especially for teams that are on call. So you're on call for 24 seven, but you're not at your terminal for 24 seven. So if you're at a concert or if you're in line at Starbucks or if it's the middle of the night, you're not rushing back to your desktop to figure out what the problem is. You can solve it right from your phone. So what is BotCube and why should platform teams use it? So BotCube is the platform for you to do collaborative troubleshooting and it works as an agent inside of your Kubernetes cluster and allows you to have full service access to your cluster and allow you to perform actions on the events that you get right into your messaging platform. So just a quick overview, um, it works with any most of the major messaging platforms um, like the Slack, Teams, Discord, and Mattermost. And it allows you to monitor Kubernetes events via um, Kubernetes source events and Prometheus. So you can get monitor events like you know networking issues, permission issues, um, things like you know um, a, not having access to a Docker image. You can get all that into Slack. And then you're also able to control um, Kubernetes with kubectl. So you're able to run things like get pods, logs, and also run Helm commands as well. So you can run your Helm list commands and all those things right into Slack or whatever messaging platform you're using. And then you can automate those event responses with BotCube's actions. So you are able to preset certain commands to be run when you run into errors. And it can kind of streamline that process so you're not having to redo the same actions that you tend to do over and over again. BotCube can take care of that for you. And you can extend BotCube to basically any source or um, e executor via the plugin system, which I'll get into some in a few minutes. And you're able to audit events, so you're able to see who does what from where um, in the BotCube um, web hosted app. And finally, you're able to seamlessly manage BotCube installation and the configuration for multi-cluster management right in the web hosted app. So for monitoring, this is a key piece of the BotCube story. You're able to monitor events like pod failures and um, resource issues right from Slack. So you're able to filter events based on um, different criteria. So you can filter anytime you create pods, you can filter um, anytime you get uh, make new deployments, filter by namespace, um, labels and annotations, which I think is really great because a lot of times when you're given logs and errors, um, you're kind of just given a massive wall of text and you're not able to highlight what you actually need to see or what you're actually interested in seeing. And another great part is that you can route events um, to the appropriate channel. So not everybody needs to see all the events that go on in a cluster. So a platform team um, should have a channel where they can see everything that's going on in Kubernetes and Prometheus, but a front end team might only be interested in things like deployments. So you're able to give the right people what they need to see. And you can also create channels for a particular instance. So if you have a client or a customer or even an, um, a developer on your team who has a particular incident, you can make an isolated channel for them to solve whatever's going on in their cluster easily. So BotCube's plugin system really highlights the core of the CNCF landscape and their message of having all tools work together. So you can use the BotCube um, plugin system to build your own plugins um, via our custom plugin workflows and via the plugins that we have already built into BotCube, like Helm and Prometheus and Kepton, which we have support for. And you can have all your tools in one place and it makes it easy for you to build a workflow based on whatever a, you're a developer on your team or your platform engineering team might need um, to work through as well. And we have extensive documentation and resources for you to be able to create your own custom plugin based on the tools and APIs that you're already using. BotCube um, also um, allows you to create plugins in any language um, via the APIs and 
as I mentioned before, we currently have support for Helm, Prometheus, and Captain. So um, bi-directional management, you can run um, kubectl and Helm commands directly from your um, chat channels. So you can run get pods, get logs, um, and get descriptions right from the channel. And it's read only by default. Um, I've definitely heard a lot of things about, oh, can I run a you know delete pods command? And the answer is no. Um, you can enable write ops in private channels, so things like Rollbox and delete, um, but it comes read only by default. But your platform team, who would need you know the key, the keys to the kingdom, can have that additional power. And we have um, Kubernetes role based access control based on your channel permissions. So, like I said before, that private channel will get that full control over the cluster. So for automations, um, with BotCube, you're able to automatically run a command when a specific event is received. So for example, um, you can run the get logs command every time you, you get an error. And this allows you to um, streamline your process and reduce typing. We also have aliases. So instead of having to type out kubectl or common commands that you use, like kubectl get pods, you can do a simple alias like K or uh, KCG to allow you to speed up your process. And with our BotCube web hosted app, you're able to do multi-cluster management and have different instances based on different teams and different needs that you have. And it's very easy to install. You can install via Helm, and then all of your configurations are kept in sync without any manual interventions like um, remaking, reconfiguring YAML files and um, reconfiguring Helm charts. And the audit logs allow you to see what's going on in your cluster at all times. So you can track which user is doing what at what time, and you can see what the root cause of different errors are. So you can easily say, OK, if I have a new employee, and their, their errors are showing up over and over again, you can take that information and make intelligent insights and say, OK, maybe we need to refresh the onboarding process, or maybe we need to change permissions. And it's, it's very helpful for being able to um, troubleshoot and just do process improvement as a whole. Finally, um, because it's linked into all of the major messaging platforms, you're able to take Baki with you anywhere. So whether that's a concert, Starbucks, or anything, you have the same um, abilities and capabilities to use BotCube anywhere you go. So just a little bit on how to get started. You can easily um, go to botcube.io and sign up and connect into BotCube via uh, the cloud application. All you need is your Slack app token and your bot token, and you'll be good to go. And we work with Slack, Microsoft, Teams, Discord, and Mattermost. And you can install your BotCube cluster with Helm, and you can configure via the web hosted app. And now it's time for the demo. Here's the BotCube website. You can easily get started here on the BotCube web hosted app, and there you can manage your clusters and instances. Hi, and welcome to the demo portion of our webinar. So here we are in the BotCube dashboard. As you can see, our BotCube is connected to our Slack workspace. Today we're going to be using Slack because um, it has the most interactivity and it's my preferred platform. So as you can see, we have Kubernetes connected to our general and random channel, Prometheus connected to our general channel, Helm connected to all of our channels, and kubectl connected to all of our channels. So you can add plugins very easily and you can put them in different um, configuration. So right now, our Kubernetes source plugin has everything set up. So you have all of your recommendations set up. So for example, you can get 
recommendations on whether a pod container is using the latest image or ingress recommendations. All the namespaces are included and we'll be focusing on error events. But if you choose, you can add or configure different plugins um, to look for creation events, warnings, deletions, and other things like that. So the great part about, about BotCube is that it's very extensible and you can basically configure it to whatever you and your team needs. Going down, we have all of our channels that we'll be working with today. And down here, we have some automations. So I already have a pre-made automation here for you, but you can easily make it yourself. So you just start with whatever you want to call it in Slack. It's display name, whether you want it, how you want it to be enabled. You can put your trigger source. Today, I'll be using Kubernetes as a source, but you can also add Prometheus or whatever source plugin you can configure for yourself. Then um, I have a kubectl as our trigger executor, and we have our kubectl command. You can at least easily go to the botcube docs um, to get some more command templates, or you can use um, a, go help, a go help template to make the helper functions for you. And then to the right, we have our aliases. I've made a few over here, but it's fairly easy. You can go ahead and just choose a display name, whatever alias you want to use, and the command that it aligns with. So I'll be doing kubectl. So right now my bot cube is configured. So if I type in kc or k, it'll um, show up as kubectl for me. And you just have to click apply, and then bot cube will sync it automatically. And we just have one instance today because we'll be using the free plan. And it's very easy to just move around the dashboard. You don't need to configure different you know, YAML files or get into Helm charts to get um, what you need done. So let's move over to our Slack workspace and see what BotCube has for us. So as you can see, the automations are already working. So we have a few errors. So I, I ran a um, describe on error automation. And when you get an error, it'll automatically give you some messages and some context about what is going on with your cluster. So here you can just run, uh, let's say, a logs if you want. And it'll tell you what's going on up here. Additionally, um, if you want to not run automations, you can take them off if, you, if you'd like. But I like to run the automations just so I can see everything that's going on. And if we want to play around with um, interactivity, we can just run a bot cube KC, the alias we made before. And then you can build your command. So this is great for people who are new to Kubernetes or instead of having to type out you know, long and complicated um, namespaces, you can just configure it here and you, get, you can build out your command easily. So if I want to see all my pods, I just was able to run that right to BotCube, and I can see we have one pod that is acting up and um, causing a lot of alerts to show up. So we have one pod that is pending and failing, and we can see that here. If I want to run a Helm command, I can do it here. So if I wanted to run a Helm list, Um, you can run it here. Excuse me. We don't have uh, interactivity for Helm, but it is on deck soon. Um, then you can get um, what is in your Helm chart. You see that we have um, a database deployed and you can get some more information there. Additionally, as I said before, if we look back on our dashboard, I only have Kubernetes source running in the general and random channel. So if I look in the private channel, I'm only getting alerts for my Prometheus and not Kubernetes. Additionally, if I wanted to run a 
Cube CTA. Dogs. That's why I like the interactivity. Uh, right, new logs. And then I can select my resource. Let's say I'm looking for some pods. And I want to see what's going on in this pod. And I can run the command easily here. And then I can filter it out. So I can say, OK, I'm only really interested in what's going on um, when things are starting. So I can type the filter right here. And I only get the information for when things are starting, which I think is great because a lot of times these logs can be hundreds of lines long. And it's great to just be able to pick out what you're looking for. And you can just have everything in the one unified streamlined control center. So imagine you're on call and you're trying to get information on what's going on um, in an event or a pod failure. You get all of that right here in your Slack. And we can see more alerts coming up as we go. And we can just try to see, OK, let's get some more information. Then BotCube will show you, OK, this is what's going on. Prometheus is freaking out. And we got to fix it. So if we go back to our dashboard, we can also see up here what we just did. So we can see that me, the user, Maria, ran a described pod. And you can see all the things that happened afterwards. So it's great for finding errors at the root cause and just seeing how different actions impact your team and what's going on in your cluster. And you can even see um, all of the mistakes I made. So that's what I was saying earlier in the example. If you have you know new members to your team that are onboarding or just general mistakes that happen in the development process, you can see all of that stuff here right in your audit log. And it's great and you can save it and you can use it for later for kind of tracking what kind of problems the team is running into. And honestly, just get um, more intelligent insights on what's going on in your cluster. Yeah, um, that is it for the demo today. Um, as you can see, there's so many things you can do with BotQ. You can filter things by channel. Um, you can have different permissions set. Um, so many things you can do. You can run different automations, play around with aliases, and you can add different instances as well. But I just like to say thank you so much for coming to this webinar. Uh -huh.